On Wednesday, NBC News Justice correspondent Pete Williams broke the news that Justice Stephen Breyer would step down from the Supreme Court. Justice Breyer made it official the next day at the White House. With President Biden's 2020 campaign promise to appoint the first black woman to the high court, a short list of candidates circulated quickly. So in light of some ugly recent confirmation fights, what will this process look like? And how might the new justice change the court? Our Sunday focus this morning from Pete Williams. I, Stephen Breyer, do solemnly swear. When federal judge Stephen Breyer was nominated to the Supreme Court by President Bill Clinton in 1994, he was confirmed by the Senate 87 to 9 with the support of 33 Republicans. But those days of easy, broadly bipartisan confirmations seem a distant memory. Two of President Trump's Supreme Court nominees attracted only a few Democratic votes. Amy Coney Barrett got none. Brett Kavanaugh's confirmation process was especially divisive. This is the most unethical sham since I've been in politics. Now with the Senate evenly split along party lines for only the fourth time in U.S. history, President Biden is about to nominate Justice Breyer's successor. And he says he'll keep a promise he made during the campaign to nominate a black woman. Someone with extraordinary qualifications, character, experience, and integrity. And that person will be the first black woman ever nominated to the United States Supreme Court. It's long overdue in my view. The two leading contenders are both former U.S. Supreme Court law clerks. Katanji Brown Jackson was a federal trial judge and is now an appeals court judge here in Washington. A Harvard law grad, she's 51 and has twice been confirmed by the Senate by unanimous consent to the trial bench and by a 53 to 44 vote to the appeals court. She's one of Justice Breyer's former clerks. Leandra Kruger is a justice on California's state Supreme Court. She's a Yale law grad, age 45, and clerked for former Justice John Paul Stevens. During the Obama administration, she was one of the Justice Department's top appeals court lawyers, arguing a dozen cases before the Supreme Court. Also mentioned is J. Michelle Childs, 55, a federal judge in South Carolina, recently nominated for an appeals court seat. She has the backing of a key Biden supporter, Congressman James Clyburn, who praises her blue-collar background. It's going to be a black woman, almost certainly, and that will be a new perspective historically on the Supreme Court. And there is a chance that the new person will be more liberal because Justice Breyer had that pragmatic streak in him that didn't always produce the most liberal results. Breyer says he'll step down once the court is through handing down all of this term's decisions in late June or early July, assuming his successor has been confirmed. That will end a 28-year career on the Supreme Court, putting him in the top 20 of the longest-serving justices. He's been a moderate to liberal member of the court, supporting abortion rights, affirmative action, and voting rights. And he remains part law professor, frequently talking about the court's critical role in American life, displaying his pocket edition of the Constitution, as he did at the White House, where he said keeping together such a wildly diverse country has been an experiment ever since the nation was founded. But it's you. It's that next generation. And the one after that, my grandchildren and their children, they'll determine whether the experiment still works. That was a great speech. Everybody should take a chance and look at Pete joins me now live. Pete, good morning. Good to see you. As you said, Judge Jackson was confirmed by the Senate just last year with a handful of Republican votes, but a Supreme Court confirmation, of course, something else entirely. So what is the timeline on confirmation here in this deeply divided Washington? Well, the president says he hopes to choose his nominee by the end of February, and there's no reason to think that he would miss that self-imposed deadline. The White House, after all, has been considering possible successors for Justice Breyer for several months now, so it has a good head start. If you think over the past four decades or so, the Supreme Court confirmation process takes on average of about 70 days. The Republicans did rush Amy Coney Barrett's nomination through in about a third of that time, and now the Democrats say they want to act that quickly, too. At this point, it seems quite likely that whoever President Biden nominates will get confirmed, maybe even with a few Republican votes, unless the confirmation process turns up something surprising, which sometimes happens, Willie. Yeah, I guess we'll have to wait and see some Republicans already signaling their no votes, despite the fact we don't know who the nominee is yet. Pete, thanks so much. Great to see you on a Sunday morning. We appreciate it.
Hey, thanks for watching our YouTube channel. Find your favorite recipes, celebrity interviews, uplifting stories, shop our favorite deals, and so much more with the Today app. Download it now.